Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stablecoins, metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today. But what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Bitcoin 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain. You've probably heard of Bitcoin, and maybe Bitcoin mining, and blockchain too. But what exactly are they? This is a short guide to how Bitcoin works. Let's start with blockchain. The Bitcoin software keeps records of Bitcoin payments and other digital events by adding a timestamp to record exactly when each event occurred. In doing so, it creates something a bit like a bank statement, with each event listed along with its time. Long lists of events and times are grouped together into blocks. The detailed content of a block is then used as the input to a mathematical calculation. Its output is called the block header, an identifier which is unique to that block. Then the block header of that block is included within the next block, and therefore as part of the input to its block header. That links the blocks together in a fixed order known as the blockchain. Identical copies of the blockchain are held on a network of computers and can be viewed by anyone on the internet. Devices communicating with the blockchain don't each need to keep a copy of every transaction in order to maintain confidence in the network. The sequence of block headers can tell them that the network is functioning correctly because a change to any of the records within a block will change its block header, and that will invalidate the link between blocks, breaking the blockchain. Because the blockchain is copied across the network, if one copy changes, it will be rejected, because the other copies, being identical, will agree that it must be wrong. That's how the blockchain keeps a true record of transactions. The blockchain is accessible to anyone on the internet, that makes it a dependable public register for all kinds of information. So that's how individual events and transactions are stored on the blockchain. Let's take a closer look at the computer network that maintains Bitcoin. The computers in it are called miners, nodes or transaction processors. Miners because, as you'll hear in a minute, they earn Bitcoin as pay for their work. Nodes, because they are points through which the blockchain network communicates and can be accessed. And transaction processors, because they confirm and record all Bitcoin transactions. Here's how the mining computers work together, partly cooperating and partly competing. Imagine a room full of accountants with adding machines, all trying to solve a single problem. Eventually, one of them finds the answer, and all the others then copy the answer, and they all start working on the next problem. A bit like that, every 10 minutes or so, the Bitcoin software automatically generates a new mathematical formula for the miners to solve. The answer is hard to find, but easy to check. The computers test millions of possible solutions until one of them discovers an answer that works and communicates it to the others in the network. In doing so, it adds the latest block of time-stamped transactions to the chain. That's how the whole network ends up with identical, up-to-date copies of the blockchain. But why do the mining computers bother? Well, it's because the computer that solves each problem is rewarded by a transfer to it of Bitcoin that's been stored within the original software. That payment covers the equipment and the electricity to run it, and hopefully gives them a profit too. The miners also receive a small fee for each transaction they process in a block. As time goes on, those transaction fees are becoming more important and the so-called block reward payments are decreasing in a way that was built into Bitcoin from the start. Like a dollar or a euro, a Bitcoin is a token of value. But Bitcoins are digital-only tokens. Unlike other digital items, such as photos or documents, they can't be duplicated. There are, and only ever will be, 
21 million bitcoins, each of which can be divided into 100 million smaller units called satoshis. To spend a bitcoin, you can think of putting it into an envelope to send the person you want to pay. This is where the ingenious mix of privacy and accountability is built into the system. The recipient needs to give you a public key to send your envelope to. It's a long string of numbers and letters, like giving the details of a post office box to send a letter to. The recipient doesn't need to worry about sharing their public key, just as you don't worry about sharing your bank account number, because people can only pay money into it. An address can be used to receive Bitcoin from anyone, just as you might find letters from different people in your post office box. For each public key, there's a private key, which must be kept secret, because that's how the owner can open the box and access the Bitcoin inside. The blockchain is publicly visible. You can see all the transactions on a Blockchain Explorer website. That creates accountability. You can even set up an alert for any Bitcoin address to be notified when money has been added to or taken from that address. So when a payment is made, the record on the blockchain shows how much money has passed from A to B and exactly when. But only A and B know who they are, and only B can now access the money. Bitcoin has been moved from one owner to another, just like a dollar bill being passed from buyer to seller. Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin wallet, blockchain, stablecoins, metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Bitcoin 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.